Tony, coming to you with my pilot episode of the Sports Biz, where we are going to talk business and sports numbers, money, salary caps, bankruptcies, you name it, we're going to talk to it in the biz. Um, Most of you probably know me from some of the shows we have here on the Peak One Sports Network with the leadoff. Um... uh, guest host on other you know various shows as well um and then previously with the business and beyond uh podcast where i was kind of the brains behind the business side of that podcast and uh i thought it'd be cool now with our new sports network uh, that i helped co-found with my brother ashton that we would bring kind of a, a business and beyond podcast slash Peak One Sports, merge them together. We're going to talk sports business. Um, For many years, if you ever listen to our uh, Business and Beyond podcast, you'll know that we we trended towards sports as being sports fans. So we would base a lot of our shows around the uh, sports business and what teams were doing, especially through COVID and how teams were reacting to that. So, um, you know, for just more diversity in the peak one sports network Um, we've got some great shows throughout like i mentioned that i'm part of our lead off the live show uh, co-host on that with my brother ashton um, who i've actually co-founded peak one sports with Um, and you know if you guys haven't checked that show out or checked out our bungalow sports show um, you know we've teamed up with dynasty dna Um, a lot of guys out there that we're, we're kind of building this this nice network with and um, you know, make sure to give a shout out to all those guys. You know, we've got writers like Adam Russell, um, just doing some really cool, fun stuff, uh, trying to bring sports to you in a different fashion than you typically see, you know, a little more laid back. Um, we're not like the big networks that you, you typically see the big corporate guys. And, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to do things a little bit different here. Um, and especially you'll see through the sports biz, um, you know, we do have a topic we'll get into today, but, you know, we're going to talk about all the fun stuff that kind of gets swept under the rug, um, that you guys like to, to talk about. We've got a, a full slate of, uh, top show topics for this one. Um, at times I'll bring in guests today. I'm flying solo, uh, but you know, we'll bring in business guests. We'll bring in other show guests that they're just going to help bring some other insight into the, uh, the topics that we have and man really we're just going to have a lot of fun uh this isn't going to be your your everyday sports show this isn't going to be boring if like i said if you listened or remember anything about the business and beyond podcast you'll know that that wasn't a boring show at all we had a ton of fun we're going to probably have try to have just as much fun here with the exception that i'll be doing most shows by myself so we're going to see how that runs uh I mean, without further ado, man, let's get into it today. Uh, the first, first thing we've got to run is the uh, Bally Sports. Uh, you know, they're filing for bankruptcy, essentially, and what, or they are, and you know what we've come to find with the this story is, you know, there's a lot of history here and how this even became. Um, that you know, and and what can this bankruptcy mean for your sports viewing in the future um if you don't know uh sinclair broadcasting um is the one actually filing bankruptcy they are the head of what would what would be bally sports um they actually trickle down to diamond sports group uh sinclair is actually the broadcasting group and then diamond sports group llc is under them which then falls into the regional markets in most regional markets as Bally Sports. Um, Currently, Sinclair Broadcasting is $8.6 billion in debt. Um, They owe about $55 billion um, in sports rights and and missed payments. 
um, to the likes of NHL, ML, MLB, and NBA teams. Um, they have about six hundred million dollars in available cash, which, with the numbers we're talking about, six hundred million dollars is not a lot, um, especially when you owe all of these teams money for these TV deals. So, um, you know, Bally Sports, as we said, is part of this group, a group of regional sports networks that are owned by Sinclair Broadcasting Group. Um, and then they're operated by Diamond Sports Group. Um, they've defaulted on previously agreed upon payments to five Major League Baseball teams. Uh, Bally Sports has listed these teams as among the least profitable ball clubs in the league, which you can understand as a bit from a business perspective that you could you don't want to continue to dump money into a sports franchise or in, into anything into any business entity if it's not making you money if it's the least profitable but they're under contractual agreements so that's a very important thing to remember and focus on here is everything's in contract here the, you know they have part of this contract they're supposed to stand by that they're not so this is where we start to have problems um but Despite not making their scheduled payments, Bally Sports continues to televise most of these teams' games. So that's another problem is that they're using these teams' likenesses in television and advertising. And they're getting the benefit from the teams, but the teams aren't getting the same benefit back. Um, but let's go back about four years ago when Robert Murdoch was part of uh, I guess Fox um, sold Fox Sports and many other um, of the Fox Entertainment Networks to Disney. Um, that transaction was actually about $71 billion. Um, the regional sports networks uh, that we're talking about here, which were in most cases you had your Fox Sports Southwest and, and all your Fox Sports affiliates regionally, those made up about $20 billion of that. Um, however, the Department of Justice came in after that transaction and said that this was an antitrust violation because Disney owned has ESPN, you have ESPN two, they have the sec network, all these other networks that fall under um, the Disney umbrella that they, you know, they said this is an antitrust violation. I don't know that that is the case, um, but that that's how they ruled it. So the, the network wasn't allowed to own the regional sports networks. Um, so, you know, I mean, we can look at that as, is, is, is maybe this is what the, what, what the department of justice thought is ESPN, Disney, they're going to, they're trying to monopolize everything. They're going to own all of the sports nationally and regionally. Um, take for that what you will. Uh, I think, ESPN at the time where we see, you know, Bally Sports is filing bankruptcy. They're in tons of debt. ESPN probably could have, you know, saved this and, and, and most likely would have. And they would have actually turned it into what, what they are today. But as we move along um, with the with that mandate from the Department of Justice, Disney had to sell these assets. Um, essentially, Disney took a. $10 billion loss um, in that sale of the regional sports networks to Sinclair, um, who only ended up paying $10 billion to Disney. Um, so just in this short time, this is a four-year span, roughly, that we've seen this. We've we've seen the value obviously decrease from, from where it started to now. So you look at, uh, at uh, Murdoch, you know, he, that was actually a smart move to get out of this seeing that it was this was a failing uh, system, you know, much of the decline in the value um, has been due to the collapse in the cable and satellite bundles because, you know, everyone cutting the cord, it, it had repercussions because people weren't locked into contracts where these contracts are guaranteed money that these networks have to spend with for the rights for these sports teams. So. Robert Murdoch looks like a genius for selling when he did because this collapse would have happened on his watch, if not, um, and it would have, you know, really hurt the, the Fox networks that they had. Um, but in response, MLB, uh, filed an emergency court motion on behalf of the teams impacted, uh, demanding for payment, uh, 
or their contractual agreements to be nullified so that they could go and pursue other opportunities. Um, Diamond Sports has filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection uh, for their 19 regional sports networks. Um, In total, Bally Sports televises the games of 14 MLB clubs. Uh, So, you know, a a decent percentage of the the league that they are actually fall under Bally Sports. And, you know, we haven't seen all teams be affected by this. Um, The five teams impacted in Major League Baseball are the Cleveland Guardians, the Minnesota Twins, the Arizona Diamondbacks, Texas Rangers, and the Cincinnati Reds. Um, Currently, the Reds are not part of the MLB lawsuit. Um, Of course, they can be, you know, if they decide to to move into that, if, you know, they elect to do so. Um, But other teams can join the lawsuit if Bally Sports misses their scheduled payments. So what we're looking at here is these five teams... They they haven't been received their pay. You know that Bally Sports has deemed these teams as the least profitable teams, and they aren't collecting checks from that. Doesn't seem right, obviously, because your contractual agreement says that you should pay it. But I'm sure somewhere the attorneys for Bally and uh, uh, Sinclair in general have said, "Hey, this is this is a situation. There's there's some loophole. I'm not a." A legal analyst in any way that I compl- would completely understand where these loopholes are, but I would imagine they have to be or they wouldn't. The- these guys are too smart and too big to make type- these types of decisions if they didn't feel like they had some, you know, some sort of uh, floor to stand on with this. Um, but according to the Athletic, uh, MLB filed an emergency court motion saying that the debtor. Uh, RSN made the decision, even though they continue to use the club's valuable intellectual property every day, which means they continue to air the games as well as use teams branding for the purposes of making money, which that's what we were talking about earlier, that they continue to air these games. They continue to use the team's likeness. They continue to use them in advertising and they're making money based on the branding of each team yet these five teams they're not paying anything out to currently or they've missed payments solely because they say they're not, uh, they're not as profitable as other markets would be. Um, but by continuing to broadcast guardians and twins games, they generated post petition revenue yet refuses to pay the club. So since they've filed for bankruptcy, they've continued to collect funds by, airing these games and you know that could get them in a in a heap of trouble Um, the MLB added and I quote what is extraordinary is that the debtor RSNs now for the first time allege that they have some right to pay less than the contract rates for those games this is not the law and I end quote Um, in the motion the MLB also noted that the clubs are ready to take over broadcasting the games uh, if need be or seek an alternative broadcast partner, which would probably be good for these teams um, if they could do that. What I feel like is probably going to happen with this bankruptcy filing, and most likely you're going to see a push for a sell, and someone else is going to buy this, you know, buy the rights at least to these teams, or buy the Diamond Sports out of of their contractual agreement and take over. Um, even with the cord cutting and you know this entanglement we've we've seen with um, all these sports networks and um, you know your YouTube TVs and your you know other streaming direct TVs and and all the issues that we constantly see these guys in fighting over money is that there's still money to be made in live sports and, and that's there's no question about that and it's, it's just them getting the numbers right. And having a negotiated deal correctly, um, I think here that these that for the naming rights and for the airing rights, uh, Diamond Sports has gone in a little too deep. Um, they've essentially borrowed more money to acquire this because what you would typically see in a business scenario is if you're going to buy, you know, we're talking billions here, but let's just say in them, you know, a million dollar or a hundred million dollar, 
you know, acquisition where you're going to buy the rights to air these games, you're you're going to do something, one of two scenarios. You're going to put your 20% down or only buy in 20% of the rights, or you're going to go get a loan, which is what they've done in the, that ladder of they've received a loan to purchase the, the airing rights, and then now they're not recouping what their expense was. So now they're trying to keep some of that cash that they're not able to recoup because essentially they've, they've overpaid and, and misnegotiated some of these deals. So I could absolutely see another, uh, another business, another venture come in and take over, um, buy them out of this contract and, and probably do it. Otherwise you probably would see in another scenario that major league baseball could come in, step in, um, and take over this and work with each market to negotiate some broadcasting deals, um, for each of those. Um, but the teams may look to, you know, for opportunities to just renegotiate deals, um, or look for partners, like we said, um, for their media rights. Um, diamond sports has recognized that they've defaulted on their payments to the MLB teams. But again, they argue bankruptcy laws enable them to restructure their financial agreements based on valuations of the current market, which could be written into these contracts. I would find it hard to believe that, the attorneys for Major League Baseball or for any of these ball clubs would have missed that, that that could be renegotiated. But it still doesn't change the fact that these payments should have been made until a renegotiation could happen and not to just stiff these teams because you have to look at a team, say like the Texas Rangers that are part of this as well, that if they haven't received a payment, but they're going all in in their payments to players. You know, they're really building well now what they've budgeted, they don't, they don't aren't gaining the revenue from what they budgeted that they should have. So how does that affect these teams? So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Um, you know, the, like we mentioned, the, the continued growth of cord cutting, uh, has had a big impact on the revenue, um, in these regional sport, uh, regional sports networks, um, command, you know, is the highest subscriber fees to cable industries. Um, that we've seen and for a few years now through these TV deals where cord cutting, um, you know, has been such, so, so prevalent, uh, you know, it's, it, it sets up this situation where yes, everyone's cord cutting and yes, everyone's doing these, you know, pay, you can pay per month. You're not locked into any contracts. Well, it's really hard for these networks to know, or I should say these, uh, providers, service providers to know exactly what they have to spend. So you're constantly in these negotiations for the, you know, the ad space and the, the airing space. Uh, so that, you know, it really changes the dynamic of, of how that negotiation goes when you're not locked in knowing I have X amount of viewers or X amount of subscribers for this year that could change quarter to quarter or, or month to month. Um, Diamond Sports is trying to have it both ways here. Um, they want the benefits of their contract without having to perform their contract after filing for bankruptcy. Uh, whether the contracts are ultimately negotiated or transferred to a third party in a separate matter, um, you know that that's for us to find out. You know this is going to, and we'll continue to talk about this in the show um, throughout this season. Is is how, what direction this is going. Um, but the bank bankruptcy code is designed to encourage parties in, uh, in interest to be part of the process and have provisions to protect companies from this type of scenario. Just in this situation that, you know, Diamond Sports is using it and it's really going to affect some major, major companies, um, as in the Major League Baseball, NHL, uh, the National Basketball Association. Diamond Sports should and will begin paying, um, and perhaps what they're trying to do here is to get an early reduction in the cost. Um, you know, they're they're gonna not pay out, and then eventually they will have to pay. But they're hoping by the time they have to pay that these are all, all these are negotiated down. These contracts, um, you know, are, are negotiated much lower than what they have now. Um, but I think the only thing that they're gonna get into here 
um, is the loss of the ability to renegotiate or assign the contracts down the road, uh, which would be a significant loss and an incredibly valuable asset. Um, Sportico reported in an April U.S. bankruptcy judge, Christopher Lopez, uh, has ordered Diamond Sports to pay the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Cleveland Guardians, the Minnesota Twins, and the Texas Rangers 50% of what they are owed in rights fees, uh, with the balance to be determined later through the bankruptcy, obviously. Um, the order is an interim measure and may be altered in the upcoming hearings. Uh, judge Lopez has encouraged MLB and Bally Sports to come up with a number or a percentage to address the payment debate. Um, the next hearing is set was set for May 10th. Um, so they're, they're, they are still working and negotiating through that. Uh, the Minnesota Twins and Cleveland Guardians uh, are Bally Sports North and Bally Sports Great Lakes uh, that both defaulted on a fee payment to the Minnesota Twins and Cleveland Guardians, um, respectively that were scheduled for April 1st, that they didn't get those. Uh, the Cleveland Plain Dealer reported in 2022, the Cleveland, Gar Cleveland Guardians revenue was 267 million. Uh, another source reported the Guardians paid 55 million annually, 20% um, of total revenue uh, by Bally Sports Great Lakes. So we, you know, you're seeing that these this is these are big numbers, man. We're talking about stuff that most of us can't even comprehend when you get into the millions and billions. And the Minnesota Twins, um, it's like we were talking about, uh, forty-two million annually in fees from Bally Sports North. Uh, the RSN was announced they plan on televising one hundred and fifty-three Minnesota Twins games this season, and the Twins agreement with Bally Sports expires at the conclusion of the 2023 season. Um, you know, the same Arizona Diamondbacks, Texas Rangers. I mean, it's it, the same thing goes on and on and on, right? That that these teams just, they're, they're not getting their payments. I know the Rangers were expected to get one on April 18th. Uh, they didn't receive the scheduled payment. And as a result, the ball club and the MLB filed the motion um, to the Texas bankruptcy court that oversees Bally Sports financial difficulties. Um, the Athletic estimates the Rangers' annual rights fee is about $111 million. Um, one day after Diamond Sports filed for bankruptcy, the Rangers had agreed to a 30-day standstill agreement. Um, good for them. They, they saw this coming and knew, you know, once they didn't get paid, that they knew what was about to happen. But uh, according to reports in the court filing, the Texas Rangers wrote that there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. And, you know, that's absolutely true. And, the, you know, they're not going to stand by and let these, let Bally Sports or Diamond Sports Group um, take advantage of them. They're going to move forward. Probably one of the, the teams that are going to work the fastest with Major League Baseball to move into a new media deal. Um, on April 17th, the Diamond Sports Group notified the Cincinnati Reds that they would miss a scheduled payment since the Reds have an equity stake in Bally Sports Ohio. Uh, they will not be part of the bankruptcy hearings um, of other MLB teams like San Diego Padres, Los Angeles Angels, Kansas City Royals, and St. Louis Cardinals. Miami Marlins also have part ownership of their respective Bally Sports networks, which is why we haven't talked about them in these, because they're part of these groups. They have stakes in them. They're going to, they will be out of them currently. Um, Diamond Sports has a 15 day grace period without penalty if the RSN fails to make the payment. Um, the MLB could take over beginning May 6th. We haven't heard of that happening yet. Um, in the event that Bally Sports forfeiture, um, you know, the Sports Business Journal reported that the MLB could distribute the games. Um, the league has a handshake agreement with Spectrum Cable and DirecTV, which they have deep ties with. Uh, the two largest distributors in the market market. Uh, the game would not be seen on Bally sports, Ohio, but could be televised locally on MLB's cable networks. Um, the Reds announcers, including hall of famer, Barry Larkin would continue in their roles, uh, with the media broadcasting, um, the San Diego Padres, uh, which lost 20 million 
which lose twenty million annually, uh, was a club Diamond Sports Group was also expected to default payment on, uh, with significant investment with players. Um, the club has the third highest MLB payroll behind the New York Mets and the Yankees. Um, the club is expected to continue this year, uh, boosting ratings and revenue. Um, the Padres advanced to the NLCS last season, so that that will help them for sure. And several other clubs could include the Detroit Tigers, Milwaukee Brewers, Tampa Bay Rays, they all reserve the right to join the MLB's motion in Diamond Sports um, default payments. With all that said, that's a ton of, ton of info here, right? But with all of that, <clears throat> what we know is that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Diamond Sports Group or Bally Sports, you know, as better known, what which is more the household name would be, is not paying these major league teams, most of them, um, especially the ones that they deem are not, get not not as profitable as others. Um, what does this mean for your sports viewing pleasure, right? What this means, you know, and I know in some cases anyways, here locally in DFW, you know, with the Rangers, um, it, it's tough to even get Texas Ranger games lo- uh, locally. Uh, it's tough to get with Bally Sports. It's tough for the Dallas Mavericks games. So unless they're nationally televised games, it, it's going to be tough to watch anyways, especially through the Bally Sports app if you have that. So... What this could do, though, is it actually could enhance and help if the MLB were to take over or each individual team were to take over and negotiate deals, which we should see, really. You know, these local teams should have more local representation and be on more local channels and local, you know, where which how a regional sports network should be. Regionally, you shouldn't miss any games for any of your teams, but with all these TV negotiations and all of the Cord cutting, it's absolutely, it's, it's, been an, it's been an atrocious situation for most. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of where, we, where we're at here in this situation. We're, we're obviously going to continue to monitor that and watch that. Um, hopefully, this is going to be a situation where we can get past it. We can maybe see some better deals negotiated. We're going to, you know, absolutely be able to, maybe, you know, maybe even be able to watch more games and and maybe maybe the MLB can work something out where they will have a bigger presence in these deals negotiated and maybe uh, each team in essence would would be maybe shown nationally more maybe you could see more of that where that you won't miss these games but absolutely you know it was a big miss by um, Disney to not be able to keep these networks together and be able to keep the regional because I don't see this ever happening if if they had had done that and had kept that and not weren't forced to so that's all I've got for you today guys um, you know really glad you joined like I said this is our pilot show this is our first test run so you know, stick with us we'll continue to bring stuff make sure to leave some comments below let me know what what other topics you'd like to talk about if you want to talk about this one some more we can absolutely do that um you know until next time i'm tony this is the sports biz